right, we are standing out here in front of a uh, Bell 47 uh, G2 model, 1957. That's what the data plate on, these, on this one says. Um, and we're going to do a pre-flight today. So first things I like to do, um, most of these checklists, you've got to make them yourself. You've got to update them. There are some guides to them, but not a lot of them have everything that includes or that, that goes with the aircraft that you're actually flying. So for example, one of the ones that our checklist doesn't mention is we have a pitot cover. So I usually start off by removing the pitot cover right here. And then uh, I'll remove the tie downs that gives us free range of the blades. Now, since I removed the tie down and I want to know that we actually removed it and you can't tie down the blade if it's parallel to the helicopter. So that makes it easy for me to see and we'll rotate the blades later on anyway. But just in case, you know, then we know that we have the tie downs removed. Roll those up and put them behind the seat. All right, we've got our little pre-flight checklist right here. And like I said, it doesn't mention everything that, you know, um, that's on there. And it's in a pretty bad mess. All right, pre-flight check. All right, first of all, battery on and we check our gauges. So I go over to the other side here. Battery's coming on. Our instrument circuit breaker is on and we check our gauges that they're all functional. And we check that our beacon is on and our nav lights are on. So nav lights are on. I can hear the beacon. I can see the whites on the tail down there. All right. And then the last one is going to be the landing light, which it is working too. So now we turn off the landing light again. We turn off our nav lights. The beacon I always like to leave on because that lets you know if you have the battery on or not. And I will switch off the battery again. So yeah, I like to leave the beacon on just so that um, I know that when I turn off the battery that, um, that the battery is on or off. So it's a good practice to leave the beacon actually on. All right. Now you gotta verify that the beacon is actually off when you turn off the battery, otherwise you have grounding issues or other issues. All right, fuel check. Now you can do that by the gauge, but the limitations for uh, these fuel gauges is usually it has to show empty when it's empty. So what I like to do is actually look in the tank. Actually, each one of those Bell 47s has what has baffles in the tank and it's so full that actually it's starting to run out when I open it. So we know it's completely full. Make sure the tank is back tight and full. Since it completely cross drains and we do not have any uh, stop cross, cross feeding in there. So we know that both tanks are completely full. Otherwise that one wouldn't be completely full. Um, you can check and verify and I like to do that. Um, otherwise they have baffles in those tanks and that gives you a really good idea of how much fuel you have in it. They actually measured at what baffle approximately how many gallons is in there. So that's pretty nice. So if you can get yourself a baffle um, diagram for your aircraft, helpful, really helpful. All right, now fuel shutoff valve, it's right here. Make sure that is in, it is in. Left door condition and security. So we don't have any doors on, so we don't have to worry about that. Left static vent clear static vents are right here on the side again they vary from model to model so you just need to make sure that it's clear we actually had um, the pitot tube that wasn't clear once because we had a little mud bug make a little nest in those in a, one of our hangars all right left skid tube so you look at the condition of the skid tube what i like to do is i kind of step to the side of it and look down to make sure that the skid shoe is 
we still have something left on the skid shoe and you can look actually on this skid and on the other one from this angle and you can see that you can see light between each one of the skid shoes when you look down on it so we know we have good skid shoes believe it or not those skid shoes all that those skid shoes are it's just a bead of weld um, on a metal plate so if you shear off all the weld on that metal plate you just put another bead of weld down so that's all the skid shoe is actually all right so again we look at the left tank and we drain it i already previously drained it yeah and i'm not going to drain it right now but here you have your, your little fuel pad cock right underneath and you drain a little bit of fluid out of the left tank make sure that there is no water in it as a good point especially if you're not if you're flying it if you're not flying it for commercial purposes or for rides or anything like that as a good if you land and you fill up the tank again there isn't enough air in order to produce moisture in order to get water in your tank so if you leave the tanks always full it is actually better for the aircraft and you won't get as much water into the tank especially if you're flying it recreational and it's sitting in a hangar for a couple of months or something it's recommended to leave those tanks full all right so we go ahead and look at the pitot tube again look that there's no mud that it's clear and it is we have a little drain right here um, that we usually pull and check um, during our 25 hour 50 hour 100 hour and so forth um, now we look at the bubble condition make sure that it's no cracked or anything and it looks pretty good I mean you can you can pretty much see the cracks we actually do see some overspray right here from where we put the sunshade on the top um, yeah right door condition and security again we don't have any doors on so we don't have to worry about that um, we look at the static vent we have another static vent right here so we looked at that one is clear and it is and then we look at the right skid tube again and this time we don't have to step back because we already looked at the skid shoes from the other side so we can just look at the condition right here um, one of the things that that you need to make sure and you know, I usually do it multiple times but we're gonna go ahead and do it now so we want to make sure that we don't have a smile in the skid so if you look back here and you look at the skids it shouldn't be sinking down or drooping down that's when somebody had a hard landing so we want to make sure that it's all level there's always going to be a little bit of a sink in it but it's hardly noticeable if it is noticeable you know they had a hard landing all right so again same as we checked the other side of that we checked this side right here so we check our fuel tank you can see our fuel tank is secured we drain right here is another petcock now a couple of things to look for so this petcock is actually um, got a small leak that we fixed just recently but then I left that on exactly for that video so if you look right here on the bottom you see how it's actually blued that is a really good indication that you have a little leak it's dry now but I left that on before I wiped it off I wanted to show that um, so you can actually on those drains when one of those petcocks is leaking um, you can actually see it by bluing on the bottom of the of the drain and you can see that right here because actually the 100 low lead actually has coloring in it and there you can see the blue coming off so yeah that's a good indication that you have a petcock that's leaking um, which we fixed that one already like I said we left that for exactly this video all right so now we're on the right hand side and we're by the engine we want to make sure that the oil cooler all the fins are straight and there's no big damage or anything like that those fins bend all the time you can see a little bit of bending and stuff but there's no you know indent or closed fins or anything like that this is the oil cooler we make sure the oil cool lines um, you know one of the one of the easiest leaks to discover is actually right here on the filter um, when they put the filter on they don't put it tight or anything like that so we look for any of those leaks you know we look down the down the lines we make sure there's no rubbing and there are some spots and it, it depends on the aircraft the way they wired it um, the way they run the wire but you've got some spots and you pretty much get familiar after you look over where you have some rubbing of the wires 
that's pretty important. For, so for example, we have a steel braided hose right here and we have several smaller wires, smaller electrical wires for lights and, um, and temperature gauges and everything like that. And you can see it's pretty close, so I want to always make sure that that zip tie is still on and it's actually separated from that steel braided line. And then I've actually got a big battery cable coming in there as well. So we check the rubbing on that and we just need to make sure that it doesn't rub. And you can see it's not rubbing there, it's pretty much clear. So that's an important part and you'll find several of those little, um, you know, several of those little friction rubs on the wire. So if you're flying an aircraft for the first time, it's a good idea to take a notebook and make a note of where those are so you can continuously monitor them and watch them. Um, so you don't get surprised by a failure of a gauge or anything like that. Um, yeah, so always look for those areas where wires start rubbing because it is a helicopter that does like to vibrate. So we have a hydraulic server in there and we're going to work our way into it. So we did the oil cooler, we did the um, oil filter, the oil lines, we checked the wires for no rubbing. So now we're going to go inside um, our mag wires that are coming into the cooling shroud. Make sure they're all clicked in the entire cooling shroud. Um, that the cooling shroud is a good condition because what happens is this fan right here in the back that blows the air onto the engine and it actually cools it. Um, somebody had a good idea um, in changing that fan to an electric fan, which I think is a brilliant idea. Um, it's going to provide better cooling. Plus, you don't have to buy a little gear that's right here in that transmission that comes out that drives the cooling belt fan or the fan belt. And that little gear is $10,000 gear. So being able to eliminate that gear with $10,000 and put an electric fan, that would be a great idea. So if anybody can think of that, definitely let me know if you get a standard type certificate for that one. Um, but we want to make sure that the cooling fan, since it is running pretty quickly, that all the fins are attached, that none of them are out of line. So we check those cooling fan blades and we check our belts. There's a grease point right here that we like to regularly grease. And I can feel the grease right now. That's pretty much a bunch of grease in there. Um, so we're good on that. And then we have our hydraulic. So this right here is actually our, that should be, which hydraulic is that? That one is gonna be left and right, if I'm not mistaken. I might be mistaken. I would have to check, but we have a hydraulic servo right here, so we check for leakage um, on that hydraulic servo. We check for play. There should be always a little bit of play because it has to be moving. Um, we can check our, our, um, our pitch links, our linkages to each one of them right here. That one right here, don't get confused because this one is the cyclic and then this one up here, that is actually the collective and it's your correlator. This is your throttle box. So this is actually your mechanical correlator link that goes into your throttle box that activates your throttle in your, um, in your carburetor. So don't mix those up with actually being linkages to the servo. To the servo, those are actually completely separate. You can see that a little bit better from the other side as well. All right, so now we're gonna look at the short shaft, the right engine side again. We check that our baffle is still on and connected. We check that all our bolts are secured. We check these right here. Those are the um, valve covers and you've got an oil, oil line that actually drains back from the valve covers and they're attached by these. You shouldn't be able to rotate them with your hand. So you just make sure that they're tight. That's usually where you get stuck to get some leakage to of oil. All right, so we're gonna move up to the short shaft. Oil is right here. We checked the oil. Now, you can see the oil is pretty clearly set. This helicopter and every helicopter likes to sit at a certain point. This one likes to sit just above six. Um, if you fill it in with seven, it's gonna drain out some oil. It's not gonna like that. The longer the helicopter sits with this one, it actually has a backflow back flow valve, so it actually drains it back into the engine the longer it sits. 
So once you get it started, that's when you get a real good temp, get real good reading. Or just when you come from post-flight and you want it to have an accurate reading, you check it on post-flight. All right, your short shaft is right here. You check that there is no lateral movement, but there is going to be a little bit back and forth movement. You check the boot right here that it's filled with grease, and you check the boot right here on the other side that it's filled with grease. While you're here, you can again check that you know your fuel is on, because this right here is your um, emergency fuel shutoff valve right here. Really nice thing about this helicopter is that we have a clear um, drain right here and we drain this as well. So we can actually make sure that we actually have 100 low lead. Just give me a second here with the helicopter. Alright, so again really nice about this is that we actually in the, in the, uh, that's the lowest point of fuel. So if you have any water in it, it's probably going to be here unless you turned off your fuel shutoff valve. But we have a clear containers and there's a fuel filter in that as well. So you can check that it's actually blue and we actually have fluid in it. Now here's another drain pet cock, so we will drain that and check. All right, tail boom attachment points, right here is one. Make sure the bolt is still on and it's all attached. On the other side, you can see it from here on the other side as well, and I will check it once you get back around. So you check on those attachment points right here. There's another attachment point right about here. So you check those, and while you're checking them, it's a good idea to check the weld. So you see every single one of the booms right here has a weld. So when I go down the line, I rub my finger. Usually when you have a paint chip or something, you can immediately feel it. Yeah, and so when I go down, as I feel those, each one of those, each one of the one on the bottom, yeah, and I check my bearing hanger. So this is the main, that's the tail rotor drive shaft that comes through. These top bearings, they're all open bearings, so you can see the grease. So if you don't see any grease coming out, it's probably no grease in it, so you got to put some more in it. But while you make your way down the tail boom, you just touch every single weld, you know. And it's going to leave some fingerprints because you're going to have some dirty grease on it from the engine. This is a greasy, ma grease, greasy machine. We do have approximately 57 grease points on this machine. So you walk your way down the line, check each one of them, make sure that there's nothing. No paint chips, no cracks on those welds. And now we arrived at the horizontal stabilizer. All right, horizontal stabilizer. Um, it basically moves with your cyclic. Now what you want to check is that you don't have any fore and aft movement and you have none on that, which is nice. Um, so that's good. You make sure that that spring isn't going to come loose during the flight either. And then you continue checking the welds. Now you have your vertical stabilizer right here on the bottom where our end number is on. So you check the attachment points. You check that it's attached, and again continue with the welds. Now we're coming to the attachment points of the lights. Check the attachment point of the lights, check that they're all good. You can see the wire running down, and we'll worry about that on the other side coming down. This right here, this is a really interesting little linkage. And you want to make sure that that's secured, it has grease in it, and you don't really want to have play when you hold both of them together between them. So there's no play, which is nice. There might be just a little at some points, but there shouldn't really be, you know, a clunk, 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 kind of. It's hard to explain, but, but there's a small tolerance on those, so you check those. All right, stinger, as we come and buy the blade, just rub on the bottom, make sure nobody hit that stinger pretty hard, and then we're on the tail rotor. So here on the tail rotor, we want to feel again if there's grease in this little boot right here. Check our pitch links right about here. Check our weights are still secured. 
look inside each one of the blades right here, look down the blade. And then what we like to do is we like to take them and actually rotate the blade so they're pretty much just like that. And then I grab them and you can actually see my thumbprint on that from every time I do it because I always grab them at the same place. And then I push them forward and backwards and I check for play in, in the blades. And then I go up and down. So I go this direction and then I go up and down and I check for play in those blades. That's important that there's not too much play in those. All right, so you've got your tail rotor drive shaft coming out, moving on the other side here. Check your gearbox fluid on your tail rotor, which looks good, it looks full. Right here we have our pitch change and now our pitch change is done by these little wires right here. And you wanna make sure that you have full movement and every time I do that, I can hear the clicking of the pedals that it hits full pedals. And that's what we want to make sure and look for. Again, you have some rollers right here and that's going to become important once we move back down the line. You notice when we came up, we actually checked the welds on the bottom um, as well as the ones on the side. So we have one more hand free to check something else on the way down. So what I like to do is I check, like to check these rollers because that is, might be another point of failure to rub through those tail rotor wires and you might have a loss of tail rotor. Um, yeah, loss of tail rotor. So you want to make sure that each one of those rollers is running and that there's no, that it doesn't rub on anything. Um, the limitation on those is three strands broken. What you can do is, with this wind coming here, what you can do is you can actually take a, take a piece of um, rag or cloth and run it down. And whenever it hangs on those wires, um, you'll know that there is a rubbing motion. I usually look down them and look for anything that looks like it sticks out. Usually what you find is a lot of grease. So for example, right here, if a strand is broken, you'll see something like that. And that's pretty easy to see when you look at it. And that's how, that's how a strain looks, but this one is just grease. There's no strain broken on it. So, but that's kind of what it looks like. Very similar to that. So we move it, we check those rollers, we check those rollers, we go down the line, we continue checking these rollers. And while we go down the line, again, we're checking the upper um, welds on that side. Again, play on that, moving down the line, checking and continuing checking. Right here is a, is a point where you really want to look at the wires because they sit sometimes right here on that little gap and they vibrate on that. So you want to check that there's a high chance of any rubbing or any loose strands. Again, check that it's all moving. And we move down the line. There's another one right here, another rolling bearings. Then when we come back here, we check at all the attachments of the uh, muffler right here battery point attachment, attachment of your um, beacon. And again, the rollers here on the bottom. There are just a couple more, these two, and then one going into the cabin, and that's all you can check from out here. And again, you see these little grease points, and that's what it looks like, so you check those and make sure that it's actually grease and not a strain broken. Once we're over here, you can see we don't have the oil cooler over here, so we have a little bit more space. We check our carburetor heat shroud, so that's where our carburetor heat gets sucked in hot air and then blown into the carburetor, which is down below on the bottom here. So we check that our, um, that our air filter is attached and securely. Um, here's our carburetor heat gauge, so we check that that's attached, and it is pretty nicely attached. So that tells us our carburetor heat. We go back down here, we've got some oil lines that we check, and then we come back to our valve covers on this side, where we make sure every single one of those is tight as well. And we come over here to our mags, again the shroud, just like on the other side. And just like on the other side, we have our um, hydraulic servos right here, with our hydraulic fluid reservoir. The hydraulic fluid is really hard to see how full it is but you can kind of see it's up to here. So what I like to do is the top of the stick is dry, right? So you poke it in, you pull it out, 
and then you watch this little red dot come up and once it hits the dry spot boom see how it goes to one side so you know it's right here so we're full so that's how you can easily check it without trying to fling and squint and whatever not to try to see it and we're back on this side so all that's left right now it's the top of the main rotor stabilizer bar scissor assembly and swash blades so the way we do that we have a nice little step right here and then right here on those cross tubes you can step on by the way if you're ever wondering what this is right here those little rivets those little rivets actually when you get your tail boom inspected they get drilled out and filled with oil and when they pull out the oil they check for corrosion inside your tubes and then they put them back in so that's your corrosion check for the tail boom doing a 600 doing a not 600 doing a 1200 hour or whatever the time life is on that um, so yeah we've got a cross tube comes down right here and we've got a cross tube that comes down right on the other side those are pretty much the most solid points you can step you don't want to step anywhere here there there you don't want to touch that drive shaft um, you don't want to step on any of these bars literally you have one foot right here and one foot on the other one and I highly recommend that you um, actually step on both so you have a good stable stand but this is the kind of where you usually have pilots fall down and break their ankles or anything like that well, let's go up you can grab here on the tank just be careful that you don't move the strap or anything you know just you basically don't want to grab you just can kind of give yourself a little lift up and I move my foot over get a good stand and I'm here all right now I'm checking the pitch links right here going to the um, stationary swash plate pitch links pitch links all right now we're coming to the scissor assembly which is these right here we want to make sure that they're greased if they're not greased they have a little bit of slop in them and you can actually feel it in the controls so if you grease them and they're nice and tight it gives you a lot better control movement so we check for that we continue up with our pitch links on that towards the stabilizer bar we check the fluid and our dampness right up here and then on the other side we have a little nut right here and this little nut is notorious to get loose and that will throw off your dampener timing because that little thing will move we check our pitch links right here we check our condition of the stabilizer bar and since we have one bar that's close up here I'm actually going to go ahead and reach over there and check that stabilizer bar. And we're going to just give a quick wait here until the Pilatus is shut down, so we'll be right back. Uh, and we want to make sure that that rod isn't tight, because if that rod is tight, that means that uh, weight actually flew off. So we can tap it lightly and we can feel it moving in there. We also want to check the dampening, and the dampening is working on it, so that's nice. Then we go up and check our pitch link right here, we check our rabbit ears, check the general condition of our, of our main rotor hub, check the ma main rotor hub right here, the top and the bottom, check the security up there, check our nuts, check what everybody calls a Jesus nuts, which is this big nut right up here. And then we look down the blade and look at the general condition of the blade, trim tab, and any cracks, any uh, damage to the blades. These blades are wooden blades, so they're actually made out of wood. All right, so once we got this blade checked out, we got this damp, no, we got that all checked out, we're just gonna rotate the blades. And it's good to shout out and let people know that you're rotating blades if you have people around you. All right, and once we rotate the blades, same thing again. We check right here our dampening fluid on the other dampener. We check our nut right here. We check the pitch links, main rotor boot, all our grease points. Usually that's up here on the main rotor blade is where the grease suits get loose. So we really want to check that there are no loose grease suits on that main rotor. Again, check the general condition of the blades and they look really good. All right, so now what I like to do is basically our pre-flight is complete. So now what I like to do is I like to put our, our blades just like that. So when we look out of the cockpit, 
we can see our blades to the side of it. That ensures that we don't have any tie downs on. Tie downs on. All right. So this was our general pre-flight. And next is before we get into the aircraft, we just do a um, quick check again. And that check is just the outside check. We checked all the details. Just make sure that we don't have anything that we forgot laying near the helicopter before we go in and start it up. So the way I do it is I make sure that everything is closed. So all the fluids are shut. So right here, hydraulic fluid, tanks is closed. Then I walk up here to the side and I walk out pretty far and I check at the general helicopter and make sure that in our blades, now that they're out, um, out horizontally, you know, now we can actually check that our blade is clear of any obstacles around us as well. We can check that there's nothing obstructing our skids, anything like that. We go over to the other side right here. We check that our fuel tank is closed on this side. Our oil um, stick is in and closed. And then I go to the back side of it. And I walk out pretty far on the back tail of it. Look back on the helicopter, that gives me now a nice little clearance look on how everything is on the side of it and that we didn't forget anything and everything like that. And I like to do that before I get into the aircraft, fire it up or do anything else. All right, we'll see you inside the aircraft.